Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be going over how to upload and flash one of these Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 mesh system satellites. So essentially this is the box right here. This one says MK63. Essentially what's going on is this is the... So this one is going to be the router because it has the internet and also usually has a sticker at the bottom. And then the other two are the nodes, AKA the satellites. And these ones just have one ethernet port. So what you could do is you could set this one next to the modem, like an Aris surfboard, and you can put these on different floors. And what it does is these act as extenders so that you're able to get coverage everywhere and um, get rid of dead spots in your home. Now, the issue I came across is I followed the steps in the app, the, it's, what is it, the Nighthawk app. Um, and so when I did try to link them up, it tells you how, it, it, you go step by step through the app, you link this guy up, it tells you to disconnect, connect it. And then after that, it says add satellites, you say yes. And so this one linked with this one, because what you'll do is these blink white, and that's when they're in pairing mode. So then they connect. This one turned solid blue. And this one was blinking when I powered it up. And then it turned blue. It was able to communicate. But this one always stayed blinking. How I know, I think, this one was the ghost. You couldn't see it on the network. And so I think there was a software issue. Um, so it's kind of like bricked. Um, and the way to go around that is you're going to need one of these. So this is like a, a USB serial. So what you're going to do is you're going to communicate to that satellite via this guy. And all you're going to need is the RX, TX, and the ground. And so you can set it to 5 volts. And so we're going to be opening up the satellite finding the debug pin head and we're going to be connecting to it and we're going to hook this up to the computer and we're going to see what exactly it's spitting out so i've already gone through this um no matter what i tried on this what i did was i did the 30 30 30 rule where when it's powered on you have the power adapter hooked up so when it's powered on you hold down on the reset for 30 seconds then you remove the power adapter and you're continuously holding the reset for another 30. And then you plug it back in and you hold it for another 30. So that, that is what you probably want to try. I tried that. It's still not working. I think it just had bad software on it. So the only way I was able to flash it was to get one of these adapters. I'll put a link for it. And like I said, so let's go over how you open this. So. What you do is you remove these little rubber foot. So you just kind of peel it off. And it's got this little star-like um, screws. Now this is from an Xbox controller I fixed. So I honestly don't know what size this is. Maybe somebody in the comments can help identify that. But what you'll do is you'll open these up. you remove that it's the first thing you see so you're going to see two antennas for the 2 gig 2.4 gig and then two for the 5 gig what you want to do is you might have these little black things right over these you can keep them there so what you do is the side that has the power adapter and the ethernet port you can just slide it back this way so you grab it you don't have to disconnect it and then you can just flip it right over now i'm going to hold it in this position with the power away from me and here it is the debug four pins um so the way you connect these is for me i did some trial and error the top one is the tx the next one down is the rx the third one's the ground and the most bottom one is the VCC. 
So you're not going to use that. You're just going to use the top three pins. So let's hook it up. We'll connect our. We'll connect the serial communicator USB and we'll try to communicate with it. The way I wired it is the orange is the RX, the red is the TX, and the brown is the ground. The way we're going to hook it up on here, make sure you get a good connection on these guys. And you will need the power adapter because when you turn it on, you'll see that blinking white right there. And we'll jump over to the computer. All right on your desktop, you want to make sure you have your Ethernet cable hooked up to the PC and to the site. Go into Control Panel, and then you'll go to Programs and Features. You'll want to turn on the TFTP client. Once you do that, you can right click, hit Device Manager, and under your COM port, if you have your USB to serial hooked up, you will see it. It should automatically install the drivers. You'll want to make sure you remember that COM port that's assigned to it. Then you'll go into your network settings. You want to right click on the Ethernet and change the PV4 settings to this right here. Hit OK. Once you do that, you should be golden. Then you'll go into the Netgear's website to the corresponding satellite. You'll hit download, and here you will have the router and the satellite firmware. You'll download it onto your desktop and then rename it to something simple because you will have to put in a command. And so it'll be a lot easier if you name it like one. Then you'll go back into PowerShell. If you have it hooked up and powered on, you should be able to ping it. Next thing you want to do is open up PuTTY. Come down here and change it to the COM port. For me, it was COM7. You'll change the baud rate, and then you will select the setting to none. You'll go back into session, and you'll switch to serial, and it should autofill. Hit OK. If it's powered on, you'll see a bunch of gibberish. So this is what the satellite is spitting out. What you want to do is you want to unplug and then plug it back in and then quickly press control C until you see this right here. When you do, you are ready to open up PowerShell. You want to make sure you hit CD desktop so that you're pointing to the desktop and then you will type in this command in PowerShell so that you can push that firmware to your satellite. TFTP space dash I space 192.168.1.1 space put space firmware underscore S dot CHK. Hit enter. This step is going to require patience because when you hit enter, you will think that nothing happened. But if you watch your USB to seal connector. It should be blinking green because it's writing information. Regardless, you should wait till you see something on the PuTTY console. And when you do, that's when you know it wrote stuff. It will also say so in PowerShell. So you have successfully pushed that file to your satellite. And that's all there is to it. So go through the app again and try to add the satellite. Follow the instructions. You should be able to sync with your router now. So after you no longer see that blinking green, it's no longer writing to it. And so this is on a solid red, which means it didn't connect to the router. And then that's just still reading what it's trying to do. So now we should be able to hook it up and then click the sync button or go through the app again. And it should be able to find it if they're all on the same firmware.
which I've already confirmed the router and the other mesh were on the latest firmware, the one we just put on. So hopefully this is helpful and it helps you flash your broken satellite or maybe even the router.